All right, Shalom. Before I start, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bakakurash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all elect Akim, Wa Akwath, learning, teaching, and truth and sincerity. And this is going to be another video to the Spirit. All right, and you know, yesterday the Spirit hopped on me to brush up on my history with World War One, you know, and completely forgot that. <laughs> Revelation, the ninth chapter, is all about World War One. Whether you scoffers want to realize it or not, all right. But this ain't, you know, necessarily necessarily about that. But I want to get this video in here to to give you a, a a visual of a couple of verses. I believe the third and fourth verses. You know, we're we're gonna get it. Don't worry. You know, and I'll leave two links for the breakdowns by one by Elder Apostle Tahar and one by Elder Apostle Ramlov. You know, I'm not breaking down the whole chapter. I'm going to be focusing in on a couple of verses dealing with the locust that's being mentioned in that chapter. All right. When you come to, you know, they do a real good job in this video. And hopefully they don't eat up. This fucker doesn't take this video down because he's using footage that's that's borrowed. But we're going to be fast forwarding to about 20 minutes in. And we're going to, you're going to see, you know, how the locust was getting down. Uh... So I found the spot, but I'm going to take it, you know, we'll start in that Revelation 9 real quick. All right, in Revelation 9 and 1, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and that star is Kaiser Wilhelm II, whether you scoffers want to believe it or not. When you go and study on World War I, all right, this man, Kaiser Wilhelm II, which he was on the German side, all right, the central powers, this man basically... You know, outside of France Ferdinand being assassinated, Kaiser Wilhelm was basically the the sole responsible for World War One. Him and his crazy antics, his bloodlust for wanting to claim power over all Europe. All right, he was the man who opened the doors for World War One, if you will. That is what a key does. All right, and when you look at that word key, real quick, that word key G seven nine two Aster. All right, a star. It says probably from base G4766, a star as thrown over the sky literally or figuratively. And in this case, it applies figuratively. All right. And what's something that's a, what's something about a star? It captivates. Everyone looks at, looks up and observe it. And this man, Kaiser Wilhelm, he, he had that occult of personality. All right. And he was running the fucking show. All right. And we know that that bottomless pit is Europe. Right, verse two, and he opened the bottomless pit. So he was one of the, he was the main man, you know, rolling the ball to World War One. And there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. All right. So we're gonna take a look at what these scorpions are you got to remember this is john he's uh when you jump down to verse 12 he's seeing the first woe he's seeing the first world war all right and he's seeing these creatures to the best of his ability look like locusts the way that they're built and constructed verse uh three yep okay so we'll come back and then we'll uh continue reading so let's let's look at these locusts Never before had such death been inflicted in war on such a scale, and the war itself was barely 30 days old. Another tool for hundreds of thousands of casualties in the first month alone. You know, I'm actually looking back, looking at the numbers, and wars was actually, there was a lot of people that fucking died. You know, hey, this new, this last, this third woe is about to be a motherfucker, y'all. <laughs> All that would come to the fore very quickly was the aeroplane. I'm a, I'm Despite having been in locust. look at them, look at that right there, and let's go look at a locust real quick. You look at a locust, right, right there, boom. You know, John is describing. He's he's working with what he got. You have the middle center body, and you have the legs that extend out. You 
have right there, the middle center body, and then you have the legs that extend out. He's comparing it unto locusts. You can see it. If the spirit is dealing with you, you can, you can fucking see it, man. The Wright brothers just 11 years previously. Early skepticism of the aeroplane. In you know, that's a good side shot. The center body and the way that it's stationed against the ground. You know, come on. Military role quickly gave way to enthusiasm as military leaders realized it was a useful tool for locating the enemy and coordinating artillery attacks. On September 2nd... So at first, y'all, when they were first having them flying around in the air, they were using them for reconnaissance. They didn't have weapons attached to them yet. They were using them to, you know, as air lookouts. And then what did they start doing? Because it took them time. You know, this is some of the... They told you that the Wright brothers had just developed these things 11 years prior. So these, these were prototypes. They had to, you know, they had to break them in for a military function. It's 1914, with the Allies on the Western Front in full retreat and Paris seemingly on the verge of falling. A French aircraft spotted a weakness in the German lines, and this allowed the Allies to successfully counterattack. In doing so, they saved Paris, and possibly France itself, from falling, dramatically changing the course of the war. It was the first time in history an aircraft had overwhelmingly affected the course of a war. In fact, aeroplanes on both sides became so good at reconnaissance and artillery spotting that both sides realized they were going to have to come up with a way to stop them. So, you know, it was getting to the point to where they both had planes, but they didn't have no weapons to knock each other down. So you got to imagine they up in the air looking at each other, taking notes with binoculars on and shit, spying out each other's camps and artilleries. They said, you know what, we got to do something about this. <laughs> they said, we got to be able to kill them jokers. So what did they do? And then we're going to go back to that revelation here in a second. All right. A matter of fact, you know, it, what did it say that this man's blessing was? All right. This man was given the gift of learning how to kill. Uh, now, I know I spelt it right. Don't play with me now. All right. Genesis 25, uh, 27. Uh, and 40, and by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. All right, and Esau, Edom, you know, he broke up from underneath us. All right, dealing in the times of the kings, but dealing with the part, upper part of the verse, by his sword shall he live. So everything that he gets his hands on, eventually he turns into a fucking weapon. And what did he turn these air, airplanes into? Pilots therefore began experimenting with ways to destroy an enemy aircraft they encountered in the air. And this led to some bizarre experiments, such as using an anchor to snag enemy planes. The obvious answer was to fit guns on the aircraft, but many of the early machines were too underpowered to carry machine guns. Instead, their crews tried firing pistols and rifles at enemy pilots, which was sometimes enough. And like the elder apostle, the elder apostle's heart breaks down. You know, you had a man known as the Red Baron who would fly around with a fucking shoddy and get up close on their ass and blow their shit and get to busting on them. You know, now that, that's pretty badass, but that's not the most effective way to do things. All right, so what did they start doing? They said, you know what? Fuck the pistols and the rifles and the shotguns. We gonna mount a gun in this bitch. Only warn an enemy off, since actually hitting the plane was all but impossible. The outbreak of war saw a dramatic increase in the pace of aircraft and weapon development, leading to the first true fighter aircraft, known then as fighting scouts, and these would turn the skies into a brutal killing field. The problem, however, was that the machine gun couldn't fire through the propeller, and instead was mounted around it, which made it difficult to aim. Some aircraft put the propeller at the rear of the aircraft, so it would not be an issue, but the Germans would later introduce the idea of synchronizing the gun to the turning of the propeller. This meant that the bullets fired between the blades as they turned, stopping as the blade passed in front of the gun and firing again when the blades were clear. Fighter pilots became celebrities during the war, with the most famous... Right there. They figured out how to synchronize... I remember learning about this show in the seventh fucking grade when going over this shit. They learned how to synchronize the gunfire to shoot in between the blades to tear that ass up. Where now we jump back to Revelation 9 and 4. And it was, uh, it says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither in a tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in their foreheads. And we're we going to come back and get to that. But verse 5, so, uh, and to them it was given 
that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And the torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. All right. Because what do bullets do when they hit you? The shit hurts. It burns and it stings like a scorpion's uh, piercing of you. All right. And, and to uh, let me see. I want to see if they talk about. This being Manfred von Richthofen, a man whose name would forever be remembered by the accolade of being the Red Baron. Richthofen's legacy went beyond his own score of 80 confirmed kills. What man himself had 80 kills, you know? This is how they were striking you. Them bullets is raining down and ripping fools out of the sky. Or if it hits your human body, you know, them bullets will, uh, <laughs> them bullets will fucking blow your shit off. Uh, knock your goddamn hips out from under you. Now you're a torso, man. All right, and to, and to, to cover, because uh, it says right here at the end of verse four, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in their foreheads, uh, and they're gonna need a muffler. Uh, those, the men. So like y'all, I'm on the road. Uh, at the end of verse four it says, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in their foreheads. Uh, so those who weren't going to go on to be the elect or go on to be the forefathers of the elect, all right? So any of our foreparents who were there in that war having to serve, they didn't die. You know, the Lord set it up to where they had to survive so they could give birth to us, you know, Lord willing, if we're at that number. But everybody else was up for fucking grabs, all right? Anybody else that was caught up in that war was up for grabs. The ones who survived were those who were meant to survive because you had our, for you had our forefathers, up in there you would in which you know who are your forefathers you you know so the men of the lord that would have got caught up and dragged up in there you know they survived that all right and jumping down to verse five where it says uh but that they should be tormented five months all right and that five months is dealing with how long the war lasted all right five years from the summer of 1914 uh and the treaty of versailles was signed in uh june which is the summer of 1919 which is five years all right so the five months is symbolic or parabolic for uh, five years. All right, now I just wanted to bring it. I just wanted to, this, you know, real quick video. I just want to highlight to show you what the locust was. I came across this. I thought it was pretty cool. You know, they show you how at first, you know, they were just flying over, you know, scouting. That's actually funny. You know, when you deal when you deal with locusts, what do locusts do? You know, they show up in mass. They fly. They scout over. Then what do they do? They get down and start eating and killing. All right, and killing the crops. Matter of fact, now let's pull up a play. Let's 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 pull up some locusts real quick. All right, I'm just playing some more footage. All right, this is footage from the First World War. You know, aviation. You know, and I'm gonna go get some footage of actual locusts to show you the similarities. Look at the body shape. Look at the wings. Look how they're hugging together. All right, look at them in unison in a line. They about to go fucking tear shit up and they look how they take off. And then we're gonna go look at some locusts. If you didn't if you were a man from the ancient world, you wouldn't have a better set of words to describe it other than a flying locust. That's the perfect word to describe these things if you didn't know any better. Look how they're flying side by side in tandem. Alright, so now let's look at some locusts. Now right here, I'm gonna click on this second video, but just before I'm cl I click on it, I wanted y'all to see it. You know, look at them. They look like fucking planes, man. Little mini planes about to tear some shit. <laughs> same, that same, that noise that the engine makes, that humming noise. You know, you can see it. If the spirit's dealing with you, you can see it. It shouldn't be a, a, you know, for those who've been around for a minute, it's not a hard concept to comprehend. I see if I can pause it right there. You know, they look like little mini fucking planes, man. So, you know, that's about it. I just wanted to touch on this. The Revelation, uh, I'll read verse 5 over again. Revelation 9 and 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. 
uh, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Matter of fact, let me see if I can pull up some pictures of some pictures of uh, injuries. Let me see. Woo wee, you know. These were some of the wounds that people acquired in that war. You know, that shit ain't nothing to play with. Which is where if I'd have kept going at Revelation 9 and 6, and men shall seek death and shall not find it, and death shall flee away from them. These people had to suffer injuries that didn't go anywhere. All right, and that, that's coming back. You're going to have people out here fucked up, man. They're going to have to deal with it till a missile hit their whole ass, because that's their lot. All right, this is real serious business. What we're dealing with here, prophecy ain't no hoe, nor is it a joke. Not in the slightest form or fashion, you know. Mm -mm -mm. You know, you can't look at that for too long. All right, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash, the wanderers to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and citations to all like Akimwa Akwath, learning, teaching, and truth and sincerity. And no wonder why these devils are so fucked up. Some of these motherfuckers is their granddaddies. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these motherfuckers is they great granddaddies. <laughs> That's why they walking around here shooting up stores and shit. Look like the nigga face got bit by a shark. You know, hey, Shalom. <laughs>